Hey everyone, Shashank this side. I hope you all are doing well today. So continuing with my RDS video series, just wanted to cover up another important topic from RDS, which is working with read replicas. So the level of uh, Amazon RDS provides the functionality that help us to create a read replica as well with all your flavors that RDS supports like MariaDB, MySQL, Oracle and Postgres as well. As of now, I haven't seen this is uh, present with Amazon RDS SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, which I have to take a look on that side. Previously, it was not there. I haven't seen uh, SQL Server from quite long time. So since frequently I'm working on MySQL and Postgres SQL DB or Amazon Aurora. So first of all, we're going to have a look on the theoretical part of the house where how the read replica works in terms of the concept and then I'll gonna show you how to create a read replica in a different region. So you can create in the same region as well but uh, I would prefer to keep this read replica in a different region uh, so that the rest of the traffic or the read kind of a traffic can go to a different region enhancing the performance of your current application hosted in one of a particular region, right? So let's start. So Amazon RDS uses MariaDB, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, DB engine built-in replication functionality to create special type of db instance which is called read replica from your source db instance so as i said this is the same functionality that we'll be going to explore now and we're gonna see what kind of benefits will we can take around with the read replica updates made on the source db instance are asynchronously copied to the read replica so if you remember with my last rds high availability video multi-AG uh, deployment, uh, you can see, uh, so what I said like uh, the replication between the two different AGs uh, happens in a synchronous way. But obviously with the read replica, the synchronous way of replication not happens. It's all asynchronous in nature. So if you are updating your primary instance, then that will gonna get reflected into the secondary instance that will take some time to reflect, okay? You can reduce the load of your source DB instance by routing the read queries, as I said, of your application to the read replica. Using read replica, you can elastically scale out beyond the capacity constraint of a single DB instance for read heavy database workloads. So every database, so 99% of the database requires a read operation. So if you are, just think like this, if you are doing a write operation, if you are doing a read operation, a single database instance, then obviously that will going to explode on the CPU on the memory side of the house. So that's where read replica comes into picture where we can like redirect all the traffic of your read replica, the heavy read operation to your read replica itself and do all the write operations on your primary instance. So that will keep your application database healthy and the performance will be become more or much more faster than what we have currently, right? Note, the information following applies to creating Amazon RDS read replica either in the same region or uh, where we have a source database or in a different region. As I said, I would prefer to keep my read replica in a different region so that uh, let's say I have a different uh, customers, one in uh, America, one in Europe, then I'll gonna have my read replica at least in the Europe region as well, so that the European countries uh, user will gonna read or hit the traffic of the read replica in that extent, okay? Okay, so let's move on to the second slide where we can have an overview of uh, RDS read replica. Deploying one or more read replica from a given source DB instance might make sense in a variety of scenarios, including the following. So we will gonna see the benefits. Scaling beyond the compute or your IO capacity of a single DB instance for a heavy load workload of uh, read operations, you can direct this excess read traffic to the other instance. So mostly routing your read requests to another instance will gonna profit your application. Serving the read traffic while source DB instance is unavailable that's also another benefit. Let's say your source DB is unavailable, but your read operation still will be available from your another instance, which is considered as your read replica. 
In some cases, your source DB instance might not be able to take IO requests, for example, due to IO suspension for the backups or scheduled maintenance. In these cases, you can redirect again your read traffic to your read replica. For this use case, keep in mind that data on the read replica might be stale because the source DP instance is unavailable because we are not getting the updated uh, data since the source DB is unavailable. That's why uh, the read replica might have a stale data as well. Business reporting or data warehousing scenarios where you might want to have business reporting queries to run against the read replica rather than your primary database production instance. So that is also kind of a benefit over here to enhance the performance of, of your application. Implementing DR, which is disaster recovery, you can promote read replica to a standalone instance as well as a disaster recovery solution if the source DB instance fails. So that's where the read replica, at least read replica will gonna help you to get the data from your application. That's how the read replica benefits us in terms of performance, in terms of DR, disaster recovery, in terms of performing a heavy read operations or like reporting kind of uh, scenarios will gonna get fetch around your read replica itself. So I hope this clears a lot in terms of what read replica is all about. Why should we go ahead and implement read replica with Amazon RDS? Even with uh, normal SQL Server instance, let's say uh, Microsoft SQL Server that we can have uh, like an active passive environment. We can redirect all the read replica. This is a SQL Server scenario where uh, it's, kind of, it's named as HADR where the second instance work as a disaster recovery instance as well, where you can have one primary instance, other is a standby. Primary will gonna get the hit every time and asynchronously, you will redirect your data to your second instance. I'll gonna cover that scenario as well when I'll be working on SQL Server. So let's jump to my AWS management console. I'm gonna show you how to create a read replica. So I'm into Northern Virginia. The RDS is already created with my last video. And this is where we have an RDS. Okay. You can see I have only one table, LGCTICW admin, which has uh, a data Shashank sex is male. Now we're gonna see this. And again, uh, this is, in a high availability zone. It's a multi-AJ deployment that we have deployed in my last video of RDS. <clears throat> so I'll be doing everything in Frankfurt. So in Frankfurt, I'll be creating all the read replica scenarios. Before that, I'll, I'll just show you what I have already present over here. So I have a VPC, custom VPC with 10.2.0016 with two subnets, sorry, three subnets. One is public two are private. So with public uh, subnet, I'll gonna initiate an EC2 instance just to check the connectivity with my RDS. Then we have a route table. One is default, which is considering as a public. So I have created my uh, internet gateway associated with it. Subnet is already associated, which is private. Sorry, this which is public. And another one is private, which has two private subnets associated. So what I'll gonna do, so I'm into Northern Virginia. Uh, another thing which I want to cover up in RDS of Frankfurt, I have created a subnet group consisting of my two subnets, two different private subnets. And these two private subnets are in two different AGs. One is in 1C and one is in 1B. So let's go ahead and create a read replica. So I'll be going to Northern Virginia. We'll be selecting my RDS. If you go to Actions tab, select the RDS instance that you have created, then Actions tab, here is an option to create a read replica. Click on Create Read Replica. So this will give us a page where we have to fill out few information. And this is coming from the source, that master that we have created, T2 small. I don't want to do multi availability zone deployment, so you can do that as well for the read replica. General purpose, Northern Virginia. So we have to go to Frankfurt. This will give us the subnet group, the two subnet that we have created. Availability zone preference, let's say 1A or let's say 1B. In anything you can select. Let's go with 1A. Security group, 
then we have RDS uh, KMS itself so that's a default key the DB instance identifier let's give this as read replica let's go take in cloudy way okay port is 3306 I don't want to do IAM authentication no monitoring is required for this video okay auto minor version upgrade not required click on create read replica okay we have an error cannot create this because there is no subnet in EU central 1a okay that's my mistake I have created only two subnet so I have to select 1b here and hit on create here we go create read replica instance you are creating a read replica from source db this new db instance will be having a source db instance db security group and parameters and all those things and please note that part of a cross region read replica creation we initiated a setup process which entails creating a snapshot and transferring the destination region click close and let's go to Frankfurt databases here we go so we are getting read replica this the role is replica over here in 1b t2 small it's in creation phase so we have to wait for this to be created for a timing what I have to do I'll be creating an EC2 instance just for the connectivity check in Frankfurt so let's go ahead and create a Amazon Linux instance and this is again if you're not aware of uh, creating an instance I'm gonna share the link for whole EC2 instance series with this particular video please go through that configure then my instance I have something called public enable the public IP next add let's say test RDS next going with the default will not work for me so let's say ssh rds then i'm gonna open this from my ip add a rule for my sql and here i'll be adding my vpc cider block so that i can access this or probably let's do that anyway uh something i don't know where are my keys so it's better to create a new one create a new one which is rds linux uh, okay let's choose an existing pair itself linux that should be fine uh, okay let's see now instance is getting created let's go to rds console again because this will gonna take some time the rds console uh, let's go to northern virginia inside my rds instance and in the replication group we can see like it's trying to create a read replica in eu central one so let's go to eu db instance let's see the state it's still in the creation phase so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pause my video and once the RDS instance creation is done the read replica creation instance is done I'll resume it back so our read replica is available now you can see I'm in Frankfurt and this is the read replica for my database let's go inside this all the configurations are quite similar to what we have in uh, master so you can see the replication state is showing replicating for eu center now let's go ahead and check our instance instance is also up i am in frankfurt let's grab this okay new window let's maximize cd desktop paste um, yes I have connected it now so I have already installed uh, MySQL over here so MySQL hyphen H let's grab our RDS endpoint from Frankfurt copy 
hyphen u as an admin which is the user hyphen p enter let's take the password copy paste enter here we go we are into our rds in frankfurt so let's say show data basis enter and we have our lgcti cw database okay so let's see if it's replicated the tables as well or not use lgcti cw sorry let's use enter we are into this show tables here we go so select star from lgcticw underscore admin and this is the record that i have created in my primary instance you can see it's 10 1 which is my northern virginia instance and this is 10 2 which is my frankfurt so let's try to create a table or let's try to insert a value insert into let's go take in underscore admin table values then we have uh, let's give name as uh, abhishek and comma then we have mail as sex hit enter select star from lgcticw underscore admin some mistake is there oh sorry i should have something here we go we have two records over here let's see it's replicated or not here we go we have another record added in frankfurt region as well so this is quite uh, fast enough because i'm just uh, adding few of the entries over here but if you're gonna have a heavy workload operation added into it that will gonna create some lag because uh, as of now the records are very less that's why it's quite fast enough to replicate and this is in the replicating status as always so that's why it's creating same record that what we are creating in northern virginia source database and we are getting same in our read replica so that's how fast is this read replica rds is all about okay so i hope this clears a lot in terms of why read replica is required for any database creation i have showed it uh, the practical demo as well how to create rds read replica the same process will go with your uh, postgres sql and rest of the uh, sql rest of the databases that we have support in rds so that's it guys for this particular video if you are facing any issue with the creation of the read replica and if you are uh, having any doubts in the concept please place out a comment in comment section and i'll be there to help you have a nice day bye bye